Oh. Hey, hey, hey. What is up, y'all? It is Nicholas. Don't call me that. Don't call me. It is your boy, Nick. Beautiful Nick. Uh, and we're here today with, yet again, another... Another viewing of a particular video that I want to view. Not a reaction. Y'all still not going for it. But I'm not a reaction channel. Don't get it twisted. Stop. No, stop calling me that. I'm not a reaction channel, bro. But look, y'all see this title, bro. Now, just like you, just like me, like the rest of y'all that are watching this video, we have all seen SpongeBob in some way, shape, or form. Even the oldest of old people have seen seen at least one episode of SpongeBob. SpongeBob is universally the most universally the most iconic show of all time. Let's just keep it a buck. Let's just keep it a buck. Some may argue this, that, or the third. Let's keep it a buck. Everybody and their mother knows that of SpongeBob. Everybody. It's one of the first shows you even watch as a kid. No matter where you grow up. By itself, it's go is I can see why they separate this because this is gonna be hard. It's, this is one of the most debatable videos that we probably gonna have on this channel, bro. What is the top twenty best SpongeBob episodes of all time? Granted, this list kind of doesn't make any sense because SpongeBob is still ongoing and on airing, so they might have some newer episodes that you know personally I wouldn't think that is the best because they're newer episodes. Obviously, I stopped watching. I stopped watching SpongeBob for a long time now. I don't know how long, but it's been a long time. But so I'm only going to remember like the older the episodes that I've watched. You know what I'm saying? So this is, you know, up for debate. You know, up for grabs. So let's go ahead and get into it, bro. Can you believe SpongeBob is 20 years old? It boasts nearly 250 episodes, but we've narrowed it down to You're 20. The same age as me. Hey guys, it's Phoebe. Welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 SpongeBob SquarePants episodes. Okay. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and you're ring not, you're the bell not gonna to be get on the notified the whole time, right? our latest videos. We're taking a look at the most memorable oh, be, SpongeBob episodes since its premiere in 1999. Let's get right to it. Number 20, Sand Castles in the Sand. I know, we can make sand castles! That sounds unboring! During a trip to Goo Lagoon, SpongeBob and Patrick build sand castles, a fun normal activity that people tend to do at the beach, you know? Leave it to them to take things an extra 10 steps further. Well, if you think you can take down this castle, my answer is bring it on! The two soon engage in warfare with each other, building okay, everything I remember they this. can I remember to this break one. down the other's castles. We've never seen two people get so competitive over sand castles. And after watching this, we kind of had an itch to go build a few ourselves. Oh, hello, and goodbye. Number 19, Karate Island. Okay, I'll give you that one, I'll give you that one. I mean, the one that can rival this one, which I don't know if they're gonna put it in there, the one with the snow. Well, y'all remember when um, SpongeBob best just basically became like a whole gallon gun and started mowing down uh patrick y'all remember that episode that was good that was pretty funny that's pretty goaded did you hear that gary i'm gonna island. be crowned <laughs> king of karate when spongebob finds oh, I remember this one. I remember this one. king of karate on karate island sandy this was sandy beat the absolute crap suspicions. out of him wasn't it sure enough spongebob is taken hostage by the island's owner oh, no. master udon Sandy will have to fight oh, her way yeah, to yeah, Dojo in this, order to this. rescue her yellow buddy from buying a timeshare. You mean this whole thing was a scam to get us to buy real estate? With its clever writing and special appearance by Mr. Miyagi himself, the late Pat Morita, Karate Island wasn't just another exceptional episode. It was a love letter to martial arts movies. <laughs> Number 18, Krusty Cleaners. Your delivery ma'am. <laughs> While delivering food to a corporate office, SpongeBob accidentally spills food on their floor. Despite the Okay, this is like a newer episode, so this is you y'all could tell by the animation by itself that this is a way newer episode. This will look right. This look kind of fun. Office having a cleaning service, he vows to return later and clean up the mess. 
Patrick tags along to help, but they end up turning the office into a massive pigsty, eventually finding themselves face to face with I'd the I've never seen this episode, robot. so I can't say that. <laughs> After a handful yeah, this of mediocre trash. seasons, Krusty Cleaners was a beautiful return to form for the show thanks to its animation, writing, and premise. Hey, Patrick may be trashy. <laughs> But he's not trash! Number 17, Roller Cowards. Tomorrow! SpongeBob, we gotta get to bed so we can be first in line! When Glove World opens up their newest ride, the Fiery Fisto Pain, SpongeBob and Patrick head straight Glo to the park. Bro, the gloves? However, Bro. their eager beaver behavior quickly diminishes when they see the steep drops and explosions. And so the two do anything they can to prolong their Oh, time yeah, I remember this one. <laughs> it's one of the few episodes that kids can relate to, and it teaches a valuable lesson in facing your fears, even if there's some potential spine. Wait, loss. ain't this the one? Okay, okay no, no, this is a different one. I'm afraid of them. Number six. I was thinking of the one when they went to there, and uh, uh, SpongeBob was like, I think she, he was on a date with like uh, Pearl or something like that. I think, I think he was. I don't know. I might be messing my stuff up. Shanghai. Holy shrimp! When a ghostly anchor hook, crashes through SpongeBob's the hook video roof, better, and soon the after hook episode better be on here. The trio bro. discovered that the Flying Dutchman has invaded their homes. Squidward is thrown into the fly of despair, while SpongeBob and Patrick yeah, become a, part of the Dutchman's episode, crew. To the Dutchman's chagrin, this proved to be more of a curse than a blessing. From little little Lee to exposing little, the little, little, department little. for how deadly it truly is, kinda. Shanghai quickly became one of the most memorable episodes. <sighs> I always hate little, going little, there. Little, little, Number fifteen. Something smells. Wow, it's Sunday, Gary. Guess what's for breakfast? In celebration of Sunday, SpongeBob decides to make himself a Sunday. Get it? Although he ends up eating some monstrosity that gives him bad breath, as one would expect. Now y'all can't tell me and act like this. This was not a symbol, like a, some type of symbol symbolism for him being high, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. He gonna come out of a whole room with a bunch of gas. Talking about <laughs> with a whole bunch of gas. Look at this man's face. Come on, bro. In fact, Bikini Bottom's residents cannot tolerate the smell, to put it lightly, which leads SpongeBob to believe he might be ugly. How can a fan not love this episode after witnessing the overreactions to SpongeBob's breath? Ugliness in the face? Well, look at it! It's look at it! it. <laughs> look at it! Hello. You look at it! Look at it! <laughs> look at it! Look at it! <laughs> Plus, Patrick gets to tell the most uplifting story of all time. Ever heard of the Ugly Barnacle? Once there was an ugly barnacle. This show is he so was goated, so bro. ugly that Look everyone died. The end. Number 14. No weenies allowed. Would you care for another diet cola with a lemon twist, weenie? While practicing karate, SpongeBob and Sandy find a place called the Salty Spittoon, where only the roughest, toughest sailors go to brawl. Sandy gets in with no problems, but SpongeBob just can't accept he doesn't belong there. Now, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Super woke time. Super woke time. I feel like Sandy's character is a representation of black women. In I'm just kidding. I'm, I, <laughs> I just lost a lot. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, bro. bro. But y'all can't tell me Sandy not black, though. Sandy black, bro. I don't care. She, she's just a squirrel. She black. I don't care. Let them have one, bro. Let them have one, bro. You know what I'm saying? Sandy Black, bro. She black. <laughs> Regardless, he goes to great lengths to try and get in. She is Whether a strong on a black wig, woman, bro. As a tattoo, or even faking From Texas. A fight. Okay, but I must warn you. I happen to be... You know what I just thought of? What if Sandy is the representation of Beyonce? Now, listen to me. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. She's strong, right? Independent. She's from Texas. Does that not sound does that not sound like some Beyonce traits? Beyonce from Texas. She's strong, independent, and she's a black woman. 
be a world championship um, kickboxer. You gotta admire SpongeBob, though. The little guy just doesn't know when to quit. No, oh, please have mercy. <laughs> Number 13, oh, okay. Wet Painters. Mr. Krabs sure has a lot of expensive this was a, treasures This was a funny one. On. I ain't gonna even This Buster was a Krabs, funny one, bro. Mr. Krabs has SpongeBob and Patrick paint his house. Although it comes with a catch. The paint is permanent and is impossible to get off. When a paint bubble explodes, it manages to paint around everything. Except Mr. Krabs' first dollar. <laughs> The two will have to get it off before Eugene gets home, which is easier said than done. If you're a fan of visual gags and slapstick, Wet Painters was one for the books. Oh, now I see it. Number 12, The String. Not all of the new episodes are home runs, but this episode held one of the most creative concepts across the show's lifespan. While cooking up patties, SpongeBob notices a loose end on the back of Squidward's shirt. However, it turns out the string extends beyond his neighbor's backside, and he ends up causing more trouble for Bikini Bottom. What? The string may not be as long as most episodes, sound like but another it's show that I've seen. how it breaks the fourth wall. <laughs> this sounds like Shock Zone. <laughs> Number 11, The Secret Box. First, I have to put away my secret box. Everyone has their share of secrets, even morons like Patrick Starr. So when SpongeBob notices his friend laughing in an inconspicuous Here's another thing that I have. And I know I keep on pausing. Do y'all really think if y do y'all really think Patrick is just now hear me out. Do you think Patrick is a just actually slow? Because I know C stars, uh they don't have they don't have like what was it? I forgot what they had. Big brains, not big brains, but like what was it? I forgot what it was. But my thing is, do y'all really think, do y'all think Patrick is actually very slow? Or do you think he actually, he just acts dumb? But he really is smart. You know what I mean? Like, do you think he's actually more, you think he's actually smarter than he looks? Or does he just actually just play dumb just to play dumb? Because y'all do realize, like, sometimes Sp Patrick really be saying some real, some real ish. Like, he really be saying some real stuff. But like it, it we like we we pass it because it's like he's supposed to be the like well technically both of them are supposed to be like the idiot characters in the in the show. But do y'all really think that he's very? Do y'all really think he's actually just actually stupid, or do y'all think he's actually smarter than we think? Just want to know. Box, his curiosity gets the best of him. Eventually, he finds out that Patrick was amused by string. If only he knew what was really in the box. Simplistic in plot and humor, the secret box teaches a lesson that some secrets are best left unknown. I should have known. It was just a piece of string all along. Ah! By the way, does SpongeBob even know the photo exists? Good thing he didn't pull the secret string open. You see what I'm saying? Secret compartment of my secret box. Revealing one embarrassing snapshot of SpongeBob at the Christmas party. Number 10, Krusty Towers. SpongeBob. Krusty Towers? <laughs> What happened to the Krusty Krab? In this episode, Mr. Krabs turns the Krusty Krab into a hotel called the Krusty Towers. Unfortunately, their only customer is the dim-witted Patrick Star, who ends up abusing their customer first policy. When Squidward reaches his boiling point, he ends up renting a room to get revenge on his boss. We see those gears turning, Squiddy. And what better place to relax than Krusty Towers, where we shall never deny a guest even the most ridiculous request. I don't have to rent you a room. Some viewers may see Krusty Towers as a turning point in the show's quality, but its premise and absurdity is top notch. This room is hideous. Sure Redesign it. Neptune the 14th will be nice. What? Number nine, Idiot Box. Mm -hmm. This is a ghost show. This is a ghost episode. <laughs> Right here. <laughs> Idiot Box sees SpongeBob and Patrick ordering a new TV, only to trash it and keep its packaging. Squidward seizes the opportunity for a new television, who wouldn't, but quickly grows jealous of his annoying neighbors. <laughs> left the left the 
Squidward's such a jerk. Turns out the two are having more fun with the box, as they use realistic sound They were effects, living rent free in this Squidward boy's head, bruh. There was a whole world to explore inside. This boy Squidward was. If there was anything this hilarious episode taught us, it's that beep, anything beep, is possible beep. with <laughs> imagination. Beep, beep, beep. Number beep, eight. Boop, beep, fun. Beep, I can't take it. Fun. It's you. Yes. Yep, we're heading all the way back to season one now. In fun, SpongeBob tries to befriend the maniacal Plankton uh -huh. and show him a more positive lifestyle. However, not everyone approves of the unlikely friendship, and SpongeBob must prove to his boss that Plankton has changed his ways. On top of its exceptional writing and memorable fun song, this episode remains to be one of the most compelling stories the show has ever told. It's not about winning, it's about fun. What's that? Number seven, graveyard shift. It'll oh, this like was a, a sleepover. This is a coded one, bro. And covered with grease. The night shift isn't for everyone, especially for someone like SpongeBob. Our poorest pal is optimistic about the night shift until this is Squidward goated. tells him the story of the hash slinging slasher. Yeah, you know about the hash slinging slasher. At first, this was only to be a mean joke, but as the night progresses, the two see signs that the slasher may very well be real. It's a fun, spooky episode that has resonated with SpongeBob fans thanks to its riveting ghost story. Number six, help one. Now I'm gonna be completely 100% honest with y'all. If they don't put that other episode where uh, him and Mr. Krabs killed the um um when they him and Mr. Krabs killed the um what you call it the uh the health inspector was it the health inspector episode? That show, that episode is goaded, bro. That everybody remember, bro. That's like one of my favorites of all time, bro. When they killed, when they thought they killed the uh health ex health inspector or whatever the uh food the food critic, whatever they killed that dude, and then <laughs> him and Mr. Krabs <laughs> had to fight them zombies. <laughs> that shit was funny as hell, bro. Haunted. I've been training my whole life for the day I can join the Krusty Crew, and now I'm ready. Help Wanted kicks off the show by showing us how SpongeBob landed a job at the Krusty Krab. Just to get him off his back, Mr. Krabs tasks him to find a high-tech spatula. Soon after our poorest pal leaves, the Krusty Krab is hit by a wave of ravenous anchovies. Many shows struggle to make a strong impression in the first episode. episode, but Help Wanted showed audiences that SpongeBob had something special, and it's been a household name for the past. He's the only one years. that works. That was the finest fast foodsmanship I've ever seen, Mr. Squarepants. Welcome aboard. But but Mr. Krabs. Three cheers for SpongeBob. Number five, the camping episode. Wouldn't it be great if it got lost? I feel like for me, SpongeBob is a representation. Of colored people in America. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. But think about it. Think about it. How come he's the only one that works the hardest and does not care about the pay? And Mr. Krabs does not pay him at all whatsoever. And he's always so jolly. He's a box, lives in a pineapple. You know what I'm saying? He's a sponge. You saying he's since he's a sponge, he soaks up like all the problems, and just let it lets it go. He's a hard worker that does not get paid and works for free, damn near. Come on, bro. I'm waking y'all up. Words that never came back. Patrick, I'm scared. Squids is excited to finally have a weekend away from SpongeBob and Patrick, as the two have made plans to go camping a few feet outside their homes. Triggered by Spongebob's remark, Have fun inside. <laughs> what do you mean, have fun inside? Squidward ends up joining the two in order to show them what real camping is. Now you'll see oh, that's where the, real where, the, where the bear comes out. Does it. Why shouldn't the camping episode be considered great? Not only do we learn the catchy campfire song song, eh. but we also learn how to defend ourselves from a sea bear. Spongebob is teaching life skills, folks. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I feel like to me, if we're gonna put it up on there, um, then you gotta put the other one, um, two honorable mentions. The one when SpongeBob and Patrick get lost in that little no, I think it was SpongeBob, Patrick, and uh, Squidward. They all get lost in like some uh forest, or whatever, and they kept on uh the Magic Clanch episode, the Magic Clanch. 
It, that that better be in here as well. The Magic Clanch episode was definitely goaded, bro. Definitely. <laughs> Number four, Krusty Krab training video. Congratulations. Yeah. You've recently been hired by definitely the Krusty a different, Krab different, restaurant, different, different and this show, is your first episode, official day of training. Ever wanted to be like SpongeBob and become an <laughs> underling, <laughs> a respected employee at the Krusty Krab? Then you might want to look into the Krusty Krab training video episode. No, you can't make a Krabby Patty without understanding the phrase poop. Here we learn a little bit about Eugene's origins, as well as a closer look at how the Krusty Krab operates. The video even covers what you should do in case Plankton tries to steal the Krabby Patty formula. Eat my microscopic dust, crabs! The episode has been universally praised for its brilliant writing, creative concept, and of course, its humor. Brilliant that writing. ending, though. Okay, the secret formula is... Number three, chocolate with nuts. That's it, Patrick. We gotta become entrepreneurs. After taking a peek in Squidward's entrepreneurial magazine, you are and Patrick become inspired <laughs> and start their own business selling so chocolate many quotables. Bars. It goes about as well as you would expect, with customers slamming their doors shut. Chocolate with Nuts isn't just one of the funniest SpongeBob episodes. It's also the most quotable. I remember when they first invented chocolate. Sweet, sweet chocolate. chocolate. It isn't uncommon to hear fans recite how Mary's mom first tasted chocolate, or the depressing, health-troubled state of the handbag salesman. And of course, there's the guy who goes nuts whenever he hears the word chocolate. chocolate! Number two, pizza delivery. Pizza? Of course we have pizza! The Krusty Krab may not serve pizza, but that won't stop Mr. Krabs from making a quick buck. What starts out this was an emotional episode, an bro. Odyssey. Luckily for Squids, SpongeBob knows some pioneer hitchhiking tricks, like how to pull over an 18-wheeler, more or less. Also, who could ever forget the Krusty Krab pizza song? The Krusty Krab pizza is ow, the ow, pizza ow, for you ow, and ow, me. Ow, ow. In addition to being one of the funniest episodes, it's one of the few episodes that reveals Squidward really does care for SpongeBob, even if he doesn't show it a lot. Sponge? It's okay. Before we unveil our ultimate SpongeBob episode, here are a few more than honorable mentions. What's going on here? Yeah, this Why one, like I said, this was goaded, bro. Chrome. Everything is chrome in the future. I declare these fry cook games. Fry cook games. Goaded. Goaded. <laughs> this is probably the one of the most goaded, bro. Everybody remembers this, bro. Doodle Bob is one of the most iconic SpongeBob characters other than SpongeBob himself, bro. Doodle Bob is that. He's that dude. Doodle Bob is that dude, bro. Doodle Bob is literally that dude, bro. Damn, he. SpongeBob got too many damn good, great, great episodes. Too many rememberable episodes, bro. <laughs> Hello, delicious. Come yes, to this is the one. This is the one I was talking about. <laughs> this is a goaded one. Alert. Mermaid Man has trained himself to sleep with his I'll eyes give him open. this one. Mermaid Man Battle for Morning episode. Get away from him. Number one, Band Geeks. Ben? Okay, now. How many of you have played musical instruments before? In order to prove his potential to Squilliam, Squidward has to... I'll give him... I, hey, you know what? I'll give him this one. 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 This one was this one's definitely iconic, bro. A band for the Bubble Bowl. Unfortunately, he seems to be the only one in town who is musically inclined. Band Geeks was one of those moments where you feel that sense of community in Bikini Bottom, especially when they jam out so hard that Squilliam faints. It showed that even when their personalities conflict, because this has been memed backs. so many Band times, gets bro. The sweet, sweet victory at our top spot. <laughs> Chocolate! Alright. What's your Alright, you, you gonna look at this. But look, I hope y'all enjoyed. Uh let me know what y'all favorite SpongeBob episode is. I told you a little bit some of mine. But damn damn near almost all You could honestly argue and just be like, damn near almost all of the old SpongeBob episodes are just goaded. Like literally every single one that we named, I named, they named, like bro, they're all just goaded, bro. They all, they all go it. They all go it. Like you can't even deny that. Like the Earthworm, like bro, the Alaskan Bullworm is still one of my favorites, bro. Uh, the Texas one from Sandy, that's that's funny. The the one when they uh, 
when she went to Hybrid Nation, that one was funny. Um, the first time uh, SpongeBob went into the uh, into Sandy's dome. I mean, like we can, bro, we can go, on, we can go on like literally almost every episode is so just it's goaded so you know let me know what y'all favorite one is i hope you all enjoy leave a like comment subscribe click the notification bell to be notified when i upload a video which is daily uh shout out watch mojo y'all didn't really i can't really argue against this one i would i not really because i can't really honestly any of them could be number one to be honest with you so i could see why this is hard to put even do 20. some of the new ones y'all can replace though to be honest with y'all in my opinion with a lot of other other ones but look it is what it is. Hey, I love y'all. I'm at Ibby.